but the Lord put on something on my heart, and it's always scary to preach something that you haven't prepared for. <laughs> but, uh, but the Lord has just put this on my heart, and I just want to share it with you and, and, and give it to you, and, and uh, hope that you'll receive it as from the Lord. But in Revelation chapter 1, there's a statement that hit me, and um, I just want to share it with you, and hopefully that you'll be challenged by this, because it is a challenging word that I have. In the book of Revelation, doesn't really matter how you interpret the book of Revelation, Jesus Christ is coming. Now I have read about, I'm not exaggerating, probably a hundred books on the book of Revelation and have studied years in the book myself personally and I have uh, fine-tuned my beliefs and uh, I have uh, changed some things and I have uh, uh, conform some things that I feel to the Word of God and uh, uh, fine-tune some of my beliefs about end times but I want to assure you about one thing that I still believe in very strongly and that is that the Lord Jesus Christ is coming back soon and I believe in the imminent the impending coming of the Lord now we may disagree about what's going to happen in the end around that coming of the, of the Lord and what's going to happen afterwards but as I understand scriptures, the Bible does teach of the, what I call the impending coming of the Lord. And what I mean by impending is like when an airplane is coming down to land and they've been in the skies for a long time and then now all of a sudden they're beginning to come down. They, they, they're shifting and put their wheels, or they extend their wheels to come down on, onto that landing. And so that strip so right now we are coming down our wheels are the wheels have been extended and the plane is coming down we say it's impending that they land and so it is with the coming of the lord as i understand my understanding of end time events is that we i believe that we are now coming down jesus is coming down jesus is coming again Time is at hand. I want you to see verse with me. This is what the Lord put on my heart. Uh, blessed is the he who reads and those who hear the words of this prophecy. Prophecy is not just to understand dates and all this. Pro prophetic words of the end times should motivate you, should challenge you, should motivate you. Listen to what it says. Blessed are those who hear the words of prophecy of this and keep those things which are written in it for the time is at hand the time is at hand the time just like that plane think of that plane the wheels are extended at the time of that airplane is ready to land in other words the time is at hand as far as the Lord's coming time is short and this is what the Lord put in my heart this morning time is short Time is very, very short. Now I believe that Jesus is coming spiritually to us first, and then he's coming to us physically from, the, from heaven. I believe in the literal, physical coming of Jesus from heaven. How many believe that? Yes. Amen. How many believe that? Yes. And he's coming again. Now, I believe that if you're going to, the time... For us to respond is not after the coming of the Lord. The time to respond to this message that Jesus is coming and he's coming very soon is now. Time is short. A while back the Lord has dropped in my spirit really strongly and has pushed me more into pressing into more that God has for me. And that is that he put in my spirit just a while back, time is short. And by me, what I mean by that is how not only the physical coming of Jesus, but G time is short as far as this last visitation of spiritually of Jesus to his people to prepare us and to get us equipped and to get us ready for these last days. These last days before the coming of the Lord, no matter how many days we have left. I believe it's very, very short, by the way. Now, I, I've, been, I've been saved a long time, and I've seen a lot of things, but what I see on the horizon right now lets, tells me and shows me and teaches me and points to the fact 
that Jesus is not just coming soon, he's coming very soon. The lineup of the nations, the God bringing back Israel back to the land to convert them, to, bring, to restore them. More Jews getting saved today than ever before. I was sharing with our Sunday school class. More people are getting saved today than ever in the history of the church. The conversion growth across the whole world is three times more than the world's population growth. More people are getting saved today, three times more than the population of the world. This is the last time we're seeing miracles are happening. And before it's all over, we're going to see more miracles happening. And so the uniqueness of this time, what we're seeing now, even this recently, we saw this, this terrible ISIS uh, uh, Islamic group. Uh, never, they said, the words are describing, they've never seen a terrorist group like this ever in the history of mankind. This is evil coming against God's kingdom. Not Listen, it's Satan reacting to what God is doing, not God reacting to what Satan is doing. God's kingdom is advancing, and Satan's kingdom always is to thwart and to disrupt and to hinder and to keep from God's kingdom mushrooming and extending and advancing on planet Earth. So we understand this. When you see evil increase, you can also say this. God's kingdom is increasing. And because God's kingdom is increasing, Satan's kingdom is trying to thwart and to come against what God is doing. That's why you see the increase of evil, because God is moving on planet Earth. His kingdom is advancing on planet Earth. So time is short, but I want to bring a practical word today. can't believe I'm preaching all this out of, out of spontaneous. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Time is short. So make sure, first of all, you're saved. If time is short, that means that tells you that you ought to make sure you're saved. Amen. Not everyone that says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of God. Amen. Many will say to me on that day, Lord, we've done this, Lord, we've done this, Lord. And he'll say to them, I never knew you. Not I used to know you, and I don't know you anymore. But I never knew you. I never had a personal relationship with you. It's possible to have churchianity, not Christianity. It's possible to have profession and not possession. It's possible to know all about Jesus, but not know Jesus in a personal way. So make sure today that you know that you're saved, that you know that you know 100% that you belong to Jesus. Not that you've been baptized, not that you walk down an aisle, but you know you've been saved. You know that your na name is written in the Lamb's book of life. And Jesus is the only way. And as long as we are here on this North Avenue, we will continue to proclaim Jesus Christ is the only way. He's not one of the ways. He is the way. And the only way, no one will enter the kingdom of God except a man be born again only through the Lord Jesus Christ and when he died on the cross and his resurrection. So make sure you're saved. You can be in church, but not in Christ. Going to church doesn't make you a Christian any more than going into a garage makes you an automobile. Amen. <laughs> so you got to be in Christ. Make sure that you've been born. There was a time where you transfer. Sometimes people say, well, I've always been a Christian. How can you always be? Were you always born? There was a day when you were born. You have a physical birthday. You should have a spiritual birthday. Born into the kingdom of God. Make sure. Time is short. Second, time is short, so we should seek the Lord with all of our hearts. Time is short, so we should seek the Lord with all of our hearts, Christian. Are you seeking the Lord every day, every week? Are you spending time in His Word? That's what seeking the Lord is, seeking Him every day, first of all. Spending time, quality time in His presence, quality time in His Word, because you need to hear the voice of God in these last days. Satan is out to deceive. Many false prophets have gone into the world, the Bible says. And in the Greek, it's really strong. It's many false prophets have gone, false prophets have gone into the world, and they are still in the world. So many false prophets have gone into the world, and they are still in the world. So there are going to be many, 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 it says many, not a few, many false prophets have gone into the world. So you have to know the voice of God. You have to know his voice in these last days because the enemy is out to deceive. And don't tell me he can't deceive Christians. He deceives even ministers of the gospel. He deceives those who have been in the gospel for years. I have known personally men of God that are far more talented than I am, far more gifted than I am, now are out of the ministry, completely out of the ministry, because the enemy has come in and deceived them. 
It's possible to be deceived by the enemy, but the, the only way against that is for you to take quality time in the Lord, with the Lord, seeking in Him every day in the Word, to hear His voice, to know what the Word, word says, to know what God says for your family, to know what God says for your life, to know what God says for your children. You need to hear the voice of God. Amen. Amen. You can get off on a sidetrack. It may be off a little bit on a sidetrack, but as you get off, you get farther and farther and farther away, away from God. I know Christians who once came to church every, all the time, but now they're not even going anywhere to church. It doesn't start just, all, boom, oh, they're gone. It's a little bit. The enemy wants to get you off a little bit, a little bit over here, a little bit over here, and a little bit over here, and a little bit over here. Compromise a little bit over here, compromise over here, compromise over here, and all of a sudden you're way over there. You need to seek the Lord every day. You need to seek Him in the Word every day. You need to hear God's voice. You need to seek the Lord every day. It's, time is short, so we need to pray. Another point. Time is short, so we need to pray like we never prayed before. We need to pray for our family. We need to pray for our lost relatives. Listen to me very carefully. Hell is real. In every revival, almost every revival in the past, when revival hits the church, they have an awareness of eternity. They have awareness of hell and heaven. Christians are asleep today. Their relatives are on their way to an eternal burning hell forever, cast away from the presence of God, and they're not praying for their relatives. You need to pray every day, storm heaven, cry out to God, oh, save my brother, save my sister, save my husband, save my family, save my uncle, save my aunt. They're going to hell. Oh, God, save them. Somebody needs to intercede. Somebody needs to stand between heaven and hell and say, no, I will not let them go to hell. I pray, Lord, may the Holy Spirit work conviction in their hearts. Give them no rest till they come to Jesus. We need Christians to stand in the gap. Who else are we going to pray for? Who else is going to pray for them? Are the ungodly going to pray for them? No. You have been called, you've been saved to pray for your unsaved relatives. You understand this today. I hope the Holy Spirit will open your eyes that your relatives, those that are close to you, if they're not saved, not religious, not good, they're good people. I t t ask, them, I ask Christians, what about your aunt or your husband? Are they saved? Well, he's a good man. <laughs> What's that mean? He may be a good person and go to hell being good. Because the Bible says there's no good bone. There's no one that does good. We all have fallen short. Don't close your eyes. Don't make excuses for your relatives. If they're not saved, they're not saved. And you have the awesome responsibility and privilege to pray for them that they get saved. My parents are in heaven today. My grandmother's in heaven today. My aunt is in heaven today who were, were not born in church. They were not born in any church. They, were, they had a religion, but they didn't have salvation. But as soon as I got saved, I started praying. I started praying. And guess what? They're saved, and they're in heaven today. What if I didn't pray? What are you going to do about your lost relatives? Oh, they have a choice. Yes, they have a choice. But I believe scripturally that when you pray the Holy Spirit can put so much influence on them the Holy Spirit can come upon them <laughs> and put so much conviction and woo them and draw them and yank them into the kingdom of God that's right that's right we call that the powerful grace of God the grace of God is powerful. But you pray, and then when you pray, God hears your prayer, and he begins to pour out his grace upon unsaved relatives. But you have to pray, Christian. You're saved to pray, to stand in the gap for your relatives. Who else will stand in the gap for them? Pray like you've never prayed before. Pray for... Christians in your family that once walked with the Lord, but now they're far away from God. They're not walking with Jesus, and you can make excuses that they're financially okay, they're educationally okay, they're going to a good school, and that's okay, but they're not walking with the Lord. What good is it 
to have degrees and have a good job and not walk with the Lord. And then, by the way, carnal Christians will not be ready for the last days. They will not be ready for the last days. They'll be eaten up by the enemy. We need to pray for those in our family that once walked with the Lord, but they're not walking anymore. And you can say, oh, but they're, doing it. they're getting a good education. Yeah, but they're not walking with the Lord. And the enemy is going to eat them up if you don't pray. But here's the good news. You can pray. You can begin to pray for them that the Lord will so come upon them that they'll have a Damascus experience. I pray sometimes they have a Damascus experience, a Pentecostal experience, a Garden of Gethsemane experience, all rolled up in one. They come upon them in revival. I've been in revival. I know what revival is. And revival can come to an individual. A revival can come where the Lord's presence can come in a powerful way. I had two theology teachers in school. Both of them are retired. Both of them with the, well, one is with the Lord right now. And one of the theology teachers <clears throat> um, taught hermeneutics, that means how to interpret the Bible. And he came to class and he shared how God visited him. And he said, God, the Lord just revived me. He said, I have to write letters to people that are not around me to ask them for forgiveness. I call people that are around me to ask them for forgiveness. I, I, the Lord has touched my, and he shared with the class. He had revival. The other theology teacher, really good. Everything down the line. But there wasn't that, something was missing. You need to pray that the Holy Spirit would come upon your relatives that are not walking with the Lord. You know what I'm talking about here. Your prodigals. Yeah, but they're good kids. They may be good kids, but they're not walking with the Lord. I, I mean, I, education is fine. I, I, I pursued it. That's fine. But I'm, I'm just trying to give, get the perspective here. I, 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 Christian parents get all excited about their kids going to this particular university that's godless. Many, Christian, many Christians have lost their faith on sitting under an atheist te teacher and under an atheist. Don't tell me that doesn't happen. It happens. I'm thinking of a family now, Pat. You and I both know. Born in a, in a Christian family. Christian family. One of the sons declares himself now to be an atheist. Christian family, Christian home. Don't just say, well, the Lord will deal with them. The Lord will deal with my children. Yeah, he'll deal with them if you pray. Pray. Some of you ought to come here on Saturday nights, at least one Saturday night, and, and intercede and cry out to God. Oh, God, bring my prodigals back. Oh, God, move upon them. Oh, Lord, move them. May the Holy Spirit grab them and yank them back and walk with the Lord like they used to walk with the Lord. Time is short. So start praying like you never prayed before. Spend some time in prayer. Quality time. Special times of prayer. Time is short. So let's witness like we never witnessed before. How many are witnessing Christians? I know some are, and some of you never witness. God's called every one of us to witness. You mean, what do you mean witness? I don't mean just sharing about God's good, and that's good. Sharing about the healings of God, that's good. But witnessing a biblical evangelism and witnessing is when the Christian tells another person about Jesus and his salvation with the purpose of bringing that person to Jesus. Are you witnessing, Christian? Are you sharing Jesus with people? Are you sharing Jesus with your relatives? Start with your relatives. After I got saved, two hours in the Lord, I was just two hours old in the Lord, 18 years old. My dad came home. I said, Dad, I got something to tell you. I didn't know anything about anything, <laughs> spiritually. I said, Dad, I want to let you know something. I got saved today. I'm, I know I'm, I'm saved. And I said, what about you? He said, uh, well, well, let me think about this. And, <laughs> and five, six months, he got saved. Amen, somebody. Come on. You need to start sharing Jesus with your relatives. Don't be ashamed of Jesus. Oh, boy, sense an anointing out. This is, this is a, ooh, thank God. He, he put something on my heart today because I believe time is short. Time is short. 
We need to witness like we never witness. There's this guy that comes to our church. When people come to our church, generally Bobby gets them before anybody else gets them. Amen. Bobby gives them the gospel. And um, this a guy that comes to our church that fixes the alarm system, Irish man, he was born in Ireland. This is the second time I've now talked to him about Jesus. First time he didn't want to say anything about it. This time he's talking to me. There's a crack. Amen. Don't stop witnessing to somebody that says, I don't want to hear about it. People say, oh, I don't want to turn anybody off. I, you know, they don't want to hear the gospel. I don't want to turn them off. What are you going to turn them off to? Hell number one to hell number two? They're already off. You want to turn them on? They're already, the light's already off. You won't turn them any more off. Then that, now you need to get the light on. Amen. You know what inspires me about this is your mother, Matina, who witnessed her friend for about 12, 13, 14 years. And when she started witnessing to her friend, her friend said, don't, get, get out of my face. I don't want to hear you. Right? She just, am I right? Get out of my face. I don't want to hear you. Now, her mother could have said, okay, okay. I give him the gospel. That's okay. She could have been a wimp about it. But her mother kept saying, yeah, but you need Jesus. <laughs> coming from this angle, coming from this angle, coming from this angle. 14 years later, that woman is not only saved, but on fire for the Lord. <laughs> Persistence. Sometimes people can say they don't want to hear it, and it can be an outward thing, but inwardly they want to hear it. You need the discernment of the Holy Spirit. Time is short. We need to witness. Have you witnessed to your fellow employees? Have you witnessed to your relatives? Time is short. Time is short. Time is short, so we need to serve the Lord faithfully. Some of you on the sidelines, you've been on the sidelines for too long. Okay, it's good to be on the sidelines for a while. Get back on the saddle. Get back in the saddle. Start serving the Lord. Some way, somehow, serve the Lord. Whatever you do for the Lord, it makes a difference. God, there's a, there's a work for every Christian, and every Christian should work. God wants you to serve Him. Once we've been saved, we have not been saved to sit. We've been saved to serve. We've been saved to serve the Lord out there, ministering to people, praying for people, showing the love of Jesus to people, praying for the sick, casting out evil spirits, sharing the gospel, but we've also been saved to serve the Lord in the local church. Start doing something. I don't know, but start doing something. God doesn't want you to just sit. He wants you to serve Him. Time is short. Don't get to sit until Jesus comes. Someone said, we need to quit sitting on the premises. we standing on the promises. There's a, there's a hymn called Standing on the Promises. Some Christians think it's sitting on the premises. <laughs> God wants you to get up and serve the Lord. It's a joy in serving Jesus. You dry up when you don't serve the Lord. You be a drop, you get introspective, you get, you get crabby, you get critical, you start criticizing people because you're not serving the Lord. It's time to serve the Lord. Time is short. Time is short, so we need to obey the Lord in everything. Time is short. No more compromising obedience. No more cafeteria obedience. I'll obey the Lord there, but I won't obey the Lord there. I want this, I'll, I'll take that obedience, but I want that. I'll obey the Lord in... Uh, um, Praying, but I won't obey the Lord in tithing. I'll obey the Lord in, um, in going to church, but I won't obey the Lord in forgiving somebody. Time is short, so I need to say, I'll obey the Lord here, obey the Lord there, obey the Lord. Whatever the Lord says, that's what I'll do. Obedience brings blessing. No more cafeteria obedience. Start obeying the Lord fully, completely. Whatever the Lord says, that's what I want to do. Because whenever, whenever I obey the Lord, blessings come. Amen. By the way, last Sunday he brought out about obedience. And I thought of another passage about obedience brings miracles. Remember when he told the, the servants, fill up the water pots with water. And then go and serve that to the wedding. 
and as they filled the water pots with water, the miracle happened. When you obey the Lord, even little things, miracles happen when you obey the Lord. Start obeying the Lord where you know where you should obey the Lord. Time is short. Time is short and you need to turn from all evil in your life. I saw a statistic. I, I don't know if I believe it. I, I just, I don't know if I shouldn't say it. I, maybe I shouldn't say it. Of how percentage of men are involved in pornography. Involved in pornography. Now, let me just say this. If you are, the good news is you can get delivered from it. Amen. Amen. You can get delivered. It's time to put away evil. It's time the way to put away those anything that's, that you're doing on the side that you know is evil, that nobody knows about it, but you know about it. It's time to bring it to the light. It's time to confess it to the Lord. It's time to turn from it. It's time to seek the Lord. Amen. It's time to repent of it. It's time to say no to it. It's time to cry out for deliverance. It's time to seek the Lord. You may not get deliverance and victory overnight, but it's time to turn to the Lord. Repentance means if you're going in one direction like this, repentance means stop and turn around and go this way. That's where repent. So you've got to stop. It may take a while to turn because it may be engrossed in your life. It may be a stronghold in your life, and the Lord's got to help you to turn. You can't turn by yourself. I'm going to be glad for that. The Holy Spirit helps you to turn. But you need to turn. It may be ungodly movies. It may be ungodly music. Some of you need to get delivered from ungodly music, by the way. Can I get an amen on this? Amen. Ungodly video games. Amen. I, you should shout me down on that one, too. Amen. How many Christian guy, people are involved in these ungodly video games? It's hooked on that stuff. Ungodly stuff. Ungodly relationships. You're tangled in there and you say, well, nobody's perfect. No, you need to repent. Ask God to turn you around. Because time is short. Some Christians are going to be ashamed that is coming, the Bible says. Whatever that means. Turn around and turn and start walking. To time is short. It's time to go wholeheartedly. Time is short. So that means we've got to go after more. Next week, I'm going to talk about pursuing the supernatural. If the Lord gives me liberty. To <laughs> but I want to, it's time to pursue more of the Holy Spirit. It's time to pursue more of the presence of God in our life. It's time to get hungry after God. You can go, listen, I know what, I know what the Christian life is all about. You can go like this and get on a plateau and just stay there. You get satisfied. But you've got to go, I'm going to press on to more. I want more. I want more fillings of the Holy Spirit. I want more anointings of the Holy Spirit. I want more of the supernatural things in my life. I want more of God in my life. That means you've got to throw away some stuff. Time to seek the Lord. Time is short. I want to be a part of that group that God is going to bless to the fullest. I want to be a part of that company that God's going to pour out His Spirit like never before. I want to be equipped for these last days. I don't want the enemy to be crushing me in the last days. And some Christians are going to be crushed in the last days because they're not ready. He said to the Christian believers, be ready. He talked to the, told the disciples, be ready. He didn't say that to an unsaved crowd. He told the disciples, be ready because it's possible to be saved and not be ready. Time, Time is short. And I'm going to say this with all of my heart. If you hear a message like this, respond to it. Let's pray. Time is short. The good news is, time is short. Therefore, I can seek and get more of God. <laughs> I can get more of the, of the presence of God in my life. I give myself away. It comes to my heart and spirit. I give myself away. If you're here this morning and you may be in church but you're not in Christ you may be a church person but you're not a Jesus person if you're here this morning and you're not sh sure that you're saved when Jesus comes it's too late to get saved I know there's some that teach that you can get saved after the coming of Christ but I can give you gobs of scripture that teach you cannot get saved after Jesus comes 
Now is the accepted time. Now is the day of salvation. Not tomorrow. Not after death. Not after Jesus comes. Now is the time to get saved. If you're here this morning and you're not sure you're saved. I don't normally preach messages like this unless the Spirit of God moves me to do it. If you're here this morning and you're not sure you're saved. Oh friend, I beg you. I beg you in Jesus name. Come to Jesus. Here's the good news. You can be forgiven of all your sins, past, present, and future. Would you just raise both hands and say, Pastor, pray for me. I am not sure I'm saved, but I want to be sure I'm saved before I leave this auditorium today. Would you raise both hands? If you're not sure you're saved, don't be, don't be afraid to lift your hands. We're, we're praying. You're in the house of friends. You're in the house of... Christians will love you. Just slip up your hands and put it down. Say, pray for me. I'm not sure I am saved, but I want to be sure today. Anybody in the house, just even raise one hand so I can see it. Everybody's sure. Praise God. That's wonderful. How many Christians? I'm going to be honest with you, Pastor. I've been sleeping spiritually. I've been falling asleep. I'm going to give a two-fold invitation with this. I want to stay awake <laughs> and I want to be ready and, and ready and equipped for these last days. I want to be alert like I've never been alert before. Would you raise your hands? Amen. How many think you're alert, but you want more? Raise your hands. Amen. Come on, Christian. Respond to this. Don't just hear it say, that was a good message. I'd rather, not, I'd rather have you not tell me it's a good message and do nothing about it. I'd rather say it's a crummy message and do something about it. <laughs> Amen. I want you to respond to what God is doing in your life. Quench not the Spirit. You can quench the Spirit by saying, not responding to what the Holy Spirit is moving you to do. If He's moving you to do to spend time with Him, they're moving you to do to cut something out of your life, moving you to do something to be more faithful, He's moving you and you're saying, I want to respond to that. If you don't respond, that's quenching the Holy Spirit. The more you quench the Holy Spirit, the more you say no to the Holy Spirit, the harder it is to hear the Holy Spirit the next time. Say yes to the Holy Spirit. Whatever that means to you. It may be going and asking forgiveness to somebody. Asking the Lord to ask, come into somebody and say, forgive me, I've wronged you, forgive me. It may be that. Or maybe witnessing, maybe start witnessing to your relative. Start praying for your lost relatives. Say yes to the Holy Spirit. Let's stand on our feet. We have a healing team, but I, I really want you to respond. Whether it means to come and kneel down at the altar, whether that means to come and stand in front, or kneel at one of the pews here in front. You can kneel at one of these pews. Just respond to the Holy Spirit. And say to Him today, Yes, Lord. God, save my relatives, Lord. Bring my prodigals back. They once served you, Lord. They once walked with you. Bring them back, Lord. Jesus. I get that out of my life, Lord. I want it in my life anymore. I cast it aside. I seek you, Lord, with all my heart. I want more of your spirit, Lord. More of the fillings of the Holy Spirit in my life. More of what you have for me, Lord. Pour it on me, Lord. <laughs> Say no to the Holy Spirit. Say yes to the Holy Spirit. Yes. Oh, 
all the holiness of holy life. Yes. I repent, Lord, of a stinking attitude that I've had, Lord, this wrong attitude I've had in my life, Lord. I repent of that. In Jesus' name. <laughs> Jesus. Life is not my own. Life's not your own. You're bought with a price. I give myself. I give myself. Totally to you. I surrender all, Lord, everything. Oh, yeah. To you I belong. I give myself. I give myself to you. Yes, yes, totally to you, Lord. Yes. To you I belong. I give myself, I give myself to you. Oh, yes, I love you. I give myself totally. Give myself away. Oh, I give myself away. So you may you be. Give myself away. Oh, oh, oh. I give myself away. So you may you Let's pray. You know, after I say amen, that doesn't mean you have to leave the altar. Just stay there as long as you feel that the Lord, that to you sense the Lord has spoken to you or touched you and you have the liberty to leave. But just because I say amen doesn't mean it's amen to what God is doing. <laughs> God will continue to work. The Lord has prepared this church. I believe we're an end time church. God has want this, wants this church to be a church equipped for the last days to what he has to do. Great and mighty things are going to be done in the last days. I don't want to be asleep. I don't want to be falling asleep. But I want to be wide awake to what God is doing. Lord, we just thank you that Jesus is coming soon. And we know he's coming soon from heaven physically. But we also believe he's coming spiritually to his people to prepare us, to make us ready, to equip us. Not only to be escaped from this world, but to use us in this world, to be a blessing to people, to bring your kingdom to people. Lord, your kingdom come in our lives. Your kingdom come through us to other people. Oh God, we need you. We, we seek you. We call on you. We cause us to search more and seek more after you, Lord. Hallelujah. Revive us. We need your revival, Lord. We need your, your, your sudden work in our lives. We need your sudden presence. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for watching the presentation from the New Life Christian Fellowship. We are located at 6235 West North Avenue, Oak Park, Illinois. For more information, call us at 708 Eight four eight two four four one. Thank you. May the Lord Jesus Christ truly bless you.